Hello everyone, just, just a quick video on how to use the Bible Text Image Creator that Soundbox has included for quite a while now, um, but it's not part of the program, so if you open Soundbox, you won't see it in the program anywhere. It's actually a separate application that Anthony has developed to produce uh, images for Bible scriptures. Like I say, if you look around here, you won't see it anywhere. You can search all you like. So let's close that and find it. Now I'm using Windows 8 on this machine um, and I would go here, go down to all my apps, scroll along until I see the Soundbox section and then find the Soundbox Bible Text Image Creator. On Windows 10, uh, you'll see it on the start menu on the left hand side uh, which should look like this on your machine it might look a bit different uh, but anyway here we have on Windows 8 so if I click that it will now open and it opens the application the same size as when it was last closed so you can resize this and it will remember the size that you last had it. I don't know why those are white, and that some, can sometimes happen. Um, occasionally it will need to load and prepare this, particularly the first time you open as it, it loads the, the EPUB from the JW.org site to then get the scriptures ready. So this doesn't have the Bible included, it gets everything from JW.org. So you can be sure that the scriptures that you choose are correct but it's still your responsibility to check um, that the images that you make are correct. So I always double check them just to make sure. But anyway, here we are and you just find the scripture. So wherever it is, so let's, let's go to Hosea and then you get the chapters here. So let's say chapter five and then verse 12 and then you click next down here. And there's the image. And that's the size of the text and the colouring by default. And then from here, you can either save the image to the default location in the settings, which I'll show you in a moment. Copy the image to the clipboard, which you can then paste into uh, our ed uh, image editor of some description. Or you can actually use it live to display this scripture onto the screen that Soundbox uses to display the media. So it will use whatever screen Soundbox has already set up to display images. So you could use it at the hall itself. I personally wouldn't recommend that because you know, you left a little bit in the lurch and you've got to hurry up and do it. But if you're feeling confident and you haven't got one ready, you can still do that. So if I press this button here, display or press F5 on the keyboard, you'll see it appears on the screen behind it because at the moment in this on this computer Soundbox is set to use the main display for media just for testing purposes and that's it so if I then when it's not needed anymore you press that again and it's gone so that's basically the program but now let's go through some of the settings so you can and some advanced settings so you can have it the way you want it so we go back and we're back to the list of scriptures just quickly, you can display more than one scripture from the same chapter. So, like I say, I've got verse 12 selected there. If I select verse 2 as well, and then go next, you'll now see verse 2 and verse 12 are now displayed at the same time. And you'll see the three dots there marking the section between the two scriptures which is really handy. So that's two separate scriptures. Obviously you can still do the consecutive scriptures if you just click each one in between, each one at, uh, one at a time. And there we are. And here we have a first sort of advanced feature if you like. You think, well hang on, that's, that's not a hole there. There's a three dots there and there's an arrow. That tells you that there's more to this image. And now you see these buttons, is, this button is typically is made available so if I click that you'll see there's the rest of the scripture so this will now create a two image slideshow that Soundbox can use 
either if I click save, you think, well, what's happened? It saved it to the default location. And the way to find out where it saved it, if you go to settings, you'll see destination folder here. And it's, this is the default place in your documents and then the sound box folder. It creates a new folder called Bible text images. So let's go and have a look in documents, sound box, Bible text images, and you think, hang on, there's a new folder here. And there's those two images. But if I drag this whole folder into Soundbox itself, so let's open Soundbox. I'll turn off the media for, for now so I can see the desktop at the same time and make this a bit smaller. If I drag this folder into the media section, you'll see in the images and audio, there's now a slideshow and if I put the display back onto there, it goes black. If I show that, there's the image and I can go to the next in sequence. So that's that feature. Obviously there are many more features besides that. So let's go through the options here, go back to here. At the top section, you see dimensions. This is where you set the resolution of the image it images it creates. You can select whatever size you want here. I would recommend leave it as it is. 1080p is a standard size, uh, particularly for the new screens that the LDC recommend in this country. But even if you have a lower resolution 720p projector, which we still use in our hall, a 1080p image can be displayed fine on that so it's best just to leave it you'll also see under here margins so at the moment it's set to 100 pixels top and bottom and 160 pixels left and right you can change that if you feel it's showing too much of a scripture so if i go back to this here we have the top margin and the bottom margin is from this down so if you find that if you think that's too much to show, it's actually easier to read if there's more space around it. it. Seems backwards that, but actually it's easier to read when there are less when there's less on the screen. So if I go back to the options and make this 160, let's make it the same as the others. And I can um, on the keyboard jump between the two sections by pressing the tab key, so instead of using the mouse all the time. Let's put it to 160 and 160 and then go forward to go back to the image. You'll now see there's a bigger gap. And actually, when you're sitting in the chair at the hall, that is easier to read. It creates sometimes more pages, but as long as the brother on the time screen or the brother operating the app in the hall is on the ball, then he can change the image as the whoever it is is reading the scripture. So and it's fine. If you ever watch the broadcast, you'll see they do that all the time. When it's a long scripture, they break it up into fairly small chunks on the screen and it, it's easier to read instead of showing you the whole thing with a lot of text on the screen. So for instance, I could put this down to 50. Let's make everything 50. And let's make the size of the font 50 as well. There you go. Then go forward. I could do that but that's far too small and also too much to read if you've got a long verse. So if I go back, I could select the whole chapter, a few like that. Look at that. You just wouldn't be able to read that from sitting in the chair in the hall. It's too much. So let's put this back to where it was. I found putting it 160 to all four is a nice, comfortable size to display but your mileage may vary and it's up to you to decide and 96 is a nice big font as well to see from the chairs at the hall let's go through some of the other options here destination folder is what i just spoke about earlier that's where the images if you click the save button that's where they're saved to the language obviously of the bible you can change that to whatever bible 
whatever language the Bible is available in. So you've got more languages here than actually than um, what Sandbox supports in some of its features. It's whatever language you can get the EPUB of the Bible in, so that's handy. The background colour makes sense. You um, click the down arrow here and you can choose a different colour. Um, flow direction, left to right, some languages support right to left, so you can change it here. Background image, this is not handy. Um, you can, instead of having a colour, you can have an image. I've got one ready to, as an example, it's actually what we use at our hall. So if I click the little button on the right here, I can then go to some built-in pictures that is, are provided, which some of them are quite nice. There's one with a Bible on it and all sorts of patterns here. They're all very pleasant. I've actually got one myself, if I go to this PC and pictures, called Read Text, which is picture of the Bible, sort of slightly blurred and dark. So if I double click that, and then go next, that's what it looks like. So you can see the Bible in the background and then the text on top. So if I go back to the options from here, you can also then change the color. So at the moment the Bible text is in white, but I can change that to a different color if I wished. You can um, change the opacity. So um, if you want it to sort of look slightly see-through, let's make it 0.6 so you can see what that looks like. You can now see through the text. I haven't used that feature, but it's there if you want to use it. Let's put it back to one. One being opaque, you can't see through it, and the lower numbers, you know, how transparent you can have it. How it aligns the text, center looks best to me, but you can have it left or right justified if you wish. The spacing of the lines, normal looks good to me, but you can make it smaller or larger. Larger makes it easy to read, but uh, try it, see what you think. Drop shadow, I like having the drop shadow. It makes the text stand out a little bit better, especially if you've got a background image. So if I show you the image with, that, with it, you see the text has got a shadow, sort of makes it sort of stand out. If I go back to the image and turn that off, go back to the settings and turn that off, and then go back to the image, see it's flat now. It's okay, but it doesn't stand out as much. So that's that, and you can, there's all sorts of options here that you can change. The body text is the scripture. The title is this bit. The, it's the title of the scripture. It's the actual scripture at the bottom. So you can change that, the color, the size, wherever it is. You can have it the, the it's at the right bottom at the moment, because you can have it at the left top if you wished, uh, whichever you prefer. Again, drop shadow and all that. Show verse numbers when you've got multiple verses. It shows the little number. So let's go back to the image. You see there's the number one. Go to the other one, there's two, and there's seven, etc. If you've only got one verse, you won't ever see the verse number. So that's only when you've got multiple verses. And again, you can have it display a different colour or how opaque that text is itself. Right. Back to the body section, if you go back to the image, you'll see there's all these funny little punctuation and pronunciation markers that we have in our Bible to help us pronounce things and break the text up a bit. But when you look at it on the screen, it sort of spoils it a little bit. There's these little tilde marks and um, all those different things. It's not this one, it's not too bad, but some scriptures have got all sorts of things shoved all over the place. If you don't want to see those you can get rid of the tilde marker now you can by unticking that so let's go back to the image there you go that's gone you can also trim punctuation so if you don't if you're not bothered about seeing uh, speech marks or other sort of things like that or uh, full stops at the end so let's do that and show you it's obviously it didn't get rid of commas and semicolons but it gets rid of full stops and things so it's up to you, try it. And then lastly, trim quotes, which obviously is speech marks. I tend to do it on a verse by verse basis. Some scriptures it looks better without, some scriptures it looks better with. So I tick and untick that depending on what I'm displaying. 
So that's that. Let's go back to the list of scriptures. And as you saw from one chapter I can select multiple verses and you press and you, know, you click to select and click again to deselect. And as soon as you go to another chapter though, it deselects everything. Okay. One last thing, when you've got a Bible book that's only got one chapter, like Jude, it still shows chapter one. And there's all the verses. Don't worry about it. When you then go into that and go to there, it shows the correct one. But it does say Jude chapter 1 verse 12. Because of the way it works, there's no real way to get around that idea. So you may choose to edit this image in an image editor before saving it to get rid of the one bit and just have Jude 12. But it's up to you. So there you go, so clicking save saves it to the default location which you can set. Clicking copy will copy it to the clipboard which you can then paste. So let's do that, copy to the clipboard, open um, paint. So let's find paint in here. Um, don't know where it is in Windows 8, I've forgotten. There we are. And then paste. There we are, there's the image that I can now edit and do things with in whatever program you happen to want to use. No, don't save. So that's what those two. This button will display it on the currently selected screen that Soundbox is set to use. So you can use it in a live environment. These buttons go through if it's a multi-image, um, multi-page image <laughs> um, where there's lots of verses involved. These go back and forward within this program. So if I go back, it goes back to the list of scriptures, forward goes back to the image, etc. And then this button, obviously, here's the settings. And that's it. One last thing, when you're in, when it's shown an image, another thing you can do, if you open a folder, you can drag anywhere within the image over to that folder. And it will, in this case, because it's a multi, page image it just it creates the folder and puts the images in it if it was just um, a much smaller verse so it only creates there we are it's just the image itself and that's tends to be the way I do it I have the because I can uh, manage the images from home for our hall I have it all ready and I just drag them into the correct place. And then just finally, which I have spoken about in another video, if you've got a lot of scriptures ready for that particular meeting, if you want them to be in any sort of order, you need to rename the images depending on where they appear in the meeting. So if it's midweek, the renaming scheme is M for midweek, and then the number of the section of the meeting. So the midweek meeting has got three sections, the one the um, digging for gems, the second one, the applied field ministry, and the third, uh, our life and ministry um, section. So you put M1, M2, or M3. Then you have a dash or hyphen, and then the number scheme you choose to have. Um, the Soundbox Media Service, which downloads the images ready for you, creates each one as a three digit number in a series of 10. So the first image of that section will be 010 or 10 and then the next one will be 020 etc etc. So if you've already got a load of images and you want it to appear between 010 and 020 you would make that 015 and then in Soundbox it will be in the correct order in the list of images so it'd be easier for the brother in the sound desk to select it. It won't all just all the scriptures won't be bunched around all over the place. It's much better if you can do it this this way when you create the images. It's a little bit of extra work, but it makes it so much easier at the hall. That's it. If you need any help, let me know. Um, please like and subscribe if you like. That helps my channel out. Um, but otherwise, I hope this has been useful. Bye.